Hello ladies and gents, welcome back. I haven't done a video since the Wimbledon final last year. It's been a very long time. And now I thought I'm gonna do one spontaneous and um, we have reached the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. We have all, only eight guys left who's now entering the second week where it all's gonna happen. And every match is a nail-biting thriller, perhaps. And we have these eight candidates left. On the top half of the draw, we have Karin Khachanov against Sebastian Korda. We have Stefanos Tsitsipas against Yiri Lehechka. Le Le Lehechka? Lehechka, I think its name is pronounced. The Czech youngster. Uh, and on the bottom half of the draw, we have uh, Novak Djokovic against Andrei Rublev. And the last quarter is between Tommy Paul and Ben Shelton, both of them are from United States, ex uh, exactly like uh, Sebastian Korda. So we have three Americans in the quarterfinals and two Russian guys and the Serbian machine, the greatest player on the field, in my opinion. And we have, of course, uh, the Greek youngster. He's not a youngster anymore, but it, to me, he's still a youngster. And uh, we will see what will happen in these four quarterfinals. But I'm going to do my prediction. First, I have to say something about Novak Djokovic. I haven't said so much about him in a long, long time since he won that Wimbledon victory. By all the tennis shows I've watched since Wimbledon during this uh, autumn season, the spring, uh, and... Uh, I, I, I can just say Novak Djokovic is clearly the best, best player in the ATP ranking. Even though the ranking is saying something else, to me it's, it's a hogus bogus sometimes the ranking. Sometimes it's fair, sometimes it's not fair. And in this case I think that it's not fair because we saw in the ATP, ATP finals, we have seen Novak so far in, the, in this tournament. He has not really been tested so far, only the first set against Tsitsipas. He lost the set against this uh, young uh, French dude, but ba basically I think that Novak gave away that set uh, to a little bit of his injury that he has. And uh, he didn't play perfect tennis, but so far after that he has almost played perfect tennis. Not his superior uh, GOAT status uh, level, but still good enough. He doesn't have to play that level anymore to beat these guys that are in the, in the field. So Novak Djokovic, he demolished, he destroyed, he made uh, Demenar look like a challenger player today. Novak, who was hitting the ball so clean from the baseline, he got so much time from Demenar. Demenar, I've always said that this guy, he's a joke sometimes. He's still ranked 24, he has a great ranking, but against a great quality player like Novak Djokovic, he doesn't stand a chance. Just remember what happened in the Australian Open 2019 where he played against Rafael Nadal, where Nadal also destroyed him. I think it was 6-2, 6-1, 6-4 or the opposite. Deminar doesn't have any weapons. He doesn't have a great serve. He doesn't have a great return. He doesn't have a great forehand, not a great backhand. He's just a great mover that he's a, only a counter puncher. When he me meets a superior player with superior qualities like Novak Djokovic that can hit through him, he doesn't resist the chance. Just look at the rallies. Nine winners only. He couldn't trade duels with Novak. He couldn't hit through Novak. He couldn't uh, pressure Novak. He couldn't come up with anything. And he didn't even get a, sn a slight sniff on a break point in Novak's serve. Novak, on the other hand, did his job. He played smart. He was one step ahead all the time. He was from dictating the game from the baseline with his backhand, with his forehand, with his ground strokes, with his superior serve, with his all-round knowledge with all his experience this was a simple affair and to be honest Demenaur he was standing two way back on the court he allowed Novak to dictate he had to run so much in this match I, I forgot I, I've, I've never seen uh, him run that much uh, uh, in a match since uh, the loss against uh, Rafael Nadal in the AO campaign 2019 
with all of that said, Novak was just too good on all levels. Um, it was nothing more than a day at the work, and he made really Dimana look like a challenge future player. It was so much difference between these guys. You can't believe that. And that is a receive of how good Novak is. All right. Into the quarterfinals. The first quarterfinals I'm going to talk about is Korda against Khashanov. They have met once what I can remember. And that was in the Wimbledon match that went the distance. It could have gone either way. Kachanov did uh, play a little bit better in that match, it was more clutch, but that was, I think, in 2018, if I can remember correctly, correctly it was in 19. Korda, on the other hand, has uh, been uh, rock solid lately. He's another type of player now. He's another type of uh, uh, f physically and mentally, and of course, he has developed his game. Korda, great serve, great forehand, great backhand, great movement. A smart player goes for the trigger knows how to take the right decision at the right time he's if he was gonna uh, win against Khachanov this is gonna be a duel from the baseline and holding serves and you have to be brave the player that is more brave and in this match is gonna be rewarded most of course uh, the only thing that is against the Khachanov's is his backhand and his net, net play if Korda can lure uh, Kachanov to the net and mix up the game, I think that he has a solid chance because Kachanov's forehand is good as least as uh, Korda's forehand. Both of these players likes to go around and hit that forehand. We know that those are their special specialities. Uh, Kachanov is a little bit more one-dimensional than Korda, but Korda has a great serve, both first and second. He And he likes to go for, go for an offensive approach like Kachanov. So this match can go either way. I still root for... I think that Kachanov is the stronger dude if you come to physicality. Uh, and if this match goes to five sets, I think that Kachanov will win. Uh, Korda's chance is to win in three or four sets, in my opinion. I believe that it's uh, Korda's turn, but I will not be surprised if Kachanov win this battle. All right, on to the next uh, quarterfinal in that section. Stefano Tsitsipas who has reached three semi-finals at Australian Open before, I think, if I'm not uh, mistaken, is uh, playing against the successful youngster from Czech Republic, Lechka, who's done a tremendous job. He had beat uh, Olger Aliasim in the la latest round. Even though I have never been a big favorite of uh, Aliasim uh, uh, before, I have said that in many of my videos, he, I think he's very overrated, but he has played better since he got uh, Nadal in his coaching team. He has developed, he has been more mentally uh, tough and he has uh, got more rewarded on behind his serve and behind his backhand. But still, he is so uh, inconsistent that I put him in the category of most of the players in the top 30. You never know what to expect from them. And any guy that has a good day in their office, uh, if they're outside the top 20, top 30, can beat Ali Asime without a problem. He's too inconsistent, like Shapovalov, like Monfils, like Dimitrov, like the rest of, uh, like guys like Deminaur. You name it, uh, you know the list. I can make this list very long, but I will be satisfied with only those names. So Tsitsipas, huge offensive game, great touch on his hands. Achilles is still his back and still his returns. But Tsitsipas has the fighting power and he is brave. He has a great offensive game. He has a huge forehand, great serve. Uh, if he takes a step into the court and doesn't allow uh, Lehechka to hit those winners, from his, especially from his forehand and his backhand, I think that uh, he's the guy that's going to advance to the semifinal. They have met once before. And Sitzpah won that meeting. It was last year, uh, around February, March, I think. It was an indoor tournament in Holland, uh, Netherlands. I think it was Rotterdam, if I'm not mistaken. I still keep track of tennis, even though I've done a video in a very, very, very long time. So, I leave that victory to um, uh, Stefanos uh, to be the guy that puts his foot, feet in the semifinal. And then... On the bottom half of the draw, two youngsters, two uh, guys that are 
very talented two guys from America, who, two guys that I believe not many expected to reach the quarterfinals. Start with the youngster Ben Shelton, who this is actually I think his first tournament outside America. He went, he leaves the states, and this is his first tournament and enters the quarterfinal. Great tremendous job. He beat Wolf today in a five-set battle. He was down two to one in sets, but managed to take that fourth uh, set in tie break. And after that, he was the stronger dude. I like this guy. He's playing some great offensive skills. He's not afraid. He hits the ball hard. He hits the ball clean. He likes to mix up the game. He likes to uh, end the points uh, fast. He's not a uh, counter puncher, and he's not a grinder. And that's uh, offensive. That offensive weapon can take him through, actually. And we have Tommy Paul. This is the best result in Grand Slam. He has never reached the quarterfinal before. Neither did, neither have Shelton. I think uh, Korda is on the same level, and Heshka, of course, also. The other guys, I think, have reached the quarterfinals. Maybe Kachanov also, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, Tommy Paul. Look, Tommy Paul had played great tennis lately. I watched him at Stockholm Open when he won the title there. I've seen him defeat Carlos Alcaraz, a bunch of Spaniards last year. He was the Spaniard killer last year. I think he even uh, defeated Nadal. He, he, he is not a terrible player, but he has had some fortune in his draw. I think he, he is capable of taking out Shelton. If Tommy Paul plays his A game, I think that he will take out Shelton. But Shelton, a youngster, he has nothing, really nothing to lose. So this battle can go either way, but I predict Tommy Paul. But seriously, I wish that Shel Shelton goes to the semi-final. I like that, those kind of fairy tale stories. One year ago, this youngster, I think he was ranked 569. He didn't have any plans on continuing to be a professional tennis player. And what does he does when he leaves the States? He leaves the States for the first time to play tennis abroad and he reaches a quarterfinal in a Grand Slam. Suck on that. That's now that's something you can brag about. So the American meeting, I think that Tommy Bo Paul will go through, but I hope that Shelton takes, take, takes him down. And the fourth quarter, we have Novak Djokovic, Rublev. Do I really have to say who I'm thinking? Winning? Of course, it's Novak Djokovic. That met three times before, two times at the ATP Finals in the round Rublev matches. Novak has won those matches in straight sets, but Rublev defeated him in Belgrade, in uh, Serbia, in a clay court tournament, in the final uh, where he defeated Novak Djokovic. So I think that Djokovic will have his biggest test. Sure, Dimenar was not a test, and uh, Dimitrov was a kind of test in the first set. Novak really is the guy that grows. The farther, the further he goes into the tournament, the further he reaches. Now he's in the quarterfinals. He's only three matches away from lifting his tenth uh, victory here, uh, lift the trophy for the tenth time. So Novak Djokovic, if he plays his standard normal A game, in, in this is a Grand Slam, remember, they have never met in a Grand Slam. Rublev, who is a hit and miss player sometimes, he has this huge forehand, he likes to go around and hit that forehand. He served tremendously good against Rune today in the last set. He needs to land his first serves, he needs to protect his second serve, he needs to go for the winners, he needs to mix up the game, he needs to... Uh, take Novak out from the baseline and sometimes make Novak enter the net where he can use his great forehand as a passing shot or backhand. He really needs to do what Roger Federer did those days during the, his heydays when he actually beat Novak. He has to mix up the game, not trading duels. Because from what I've seen, Rublev is one of the most inconsistent and one of the uh, most stupid player when it comes to tennis tragedy. He's a guy that doesn't have that patience. Today on court against Rune, he behaved well. He didn't get his out burn burst that he has sometimes that can be an, uh, in a way for, from his game. When he, when he comes into that mood, he's, he, he's, he's, uh, there is no numbers for how many unforced errors he can squeal out of his own racket. He is a, definitely uh, one of those players that always beats himself when he plays bad. 
So Rublev have the game. No, he has the firepower. Certainly do. He 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 have the baseline game. But against Novak, it's not all about hit, hit. It it comes down to play smart tennis. If he can play sp smart against Novak Djokovic, he has a chance. He has to take the first set, be clutch, and try to return as good as possible. Because Novak Djokovic, we have no. Everybody's talking about his defense, his offensive skills, uh, how he, how clean he hits the ball. But nobody talks about how good of a server Novak Djokovic is. It's barely, uh, his serve is barely untouchable these days. I don't know. I, I've seen the improvement since Becker was his coach. And of course, now Goran Ivanisevic. Both of his seconds and se first serve are tremendously good. And he can vary at that serve so great. Uh, I'm still... I'm not shocked anymore. I hold Novak Djokovic as one of the best servers on tour. One of the best returners, of course. And when it comes to the clutch, when it comes to play strategically, take advantage of your opponent's uh, weaknesses, nobody's better than Novak. Novak has different game plans against every opponent that, that he, he uh, faces. Not Rublev, he always plays the same game. That's why he's very predictable. And I think if he doesn't change one or two small things in that, I think that he can pack his bag also. So Novak will get through also, I believe. Maybe uh, he will take a set maximum from Novak Djokovic. Maximum, maximum. That best. But it's sports. Everything can happen. All right. Thank you for watching this video. Take care and bye-bye.